Hello everyone. Uh, so today we are gonna uh, talk about a problem. Uh, so the problem is uh, given three random variables x1, x2, and x3. Uh, if the correlations between x1, x2, x1, x3, and x2, x3 are all equal, let's say rho, then what is the range of rho? So uh, when you first look at this problem, you think about you know, correlations, you think about its covariance. Uh, so the problem comes down to what kind of value of rho will make the covariance matrix uh, a covariance matrix, which means that it has to be a positive semi-definite matrix. So, so that, that's the problem we want to find. We find the rho so such that the covariance matrix is positive semi-definite. And uh, so that's how we solve it. Uh, but how do we how do we come down to from a correlation to a covariance matrix? So here's how we can solve it. So look at this one. This is the covariance matrix. On the diagonal is the variance. On on the other other terms uh, are the covariance of uh, each pair of random variables. It's symmetric. Uh, so for this to be and and what is the relationship of, of covariance matrix and the correlation matrix? So it says if, if you see here, the covariance matrix can be written as a a, a a correlation matrix times two diagonal matrix, and which on the on the, on the diag diagonal matrix are the uh, are the standard deviations of each random variable. If you time those uh, those terms together, you get the uh, the covariance matrix. So, for example, here, uh, if you time this row uh, to the column space uh, to the row space of the co correlation matrix, you times this uh, sigma one one inverse to each terms on on each row uh, on this row, and this will times to here, and this will times to here. Uh, and so each one will will be divided by uh, sigma. So the first row will be will be divided by sigma one one, and a sigma second row divided by sigma two two, third row divided by sigma three three, and this one is the same. So by timing the column space here, uh, to the to the uh, the columns here to the column space of the correlation matrix, we are dividing each column on here by by the uh, the sigma square as the, to the the sigma inverse and that will leave it to you guys to verify that will be uh, our covariance matrix and for this to be uh, positive semi-definite semi is equivalent to the correlation matrix to be positive semi-definite because these two are positive semi-definite and for this to be positive, positive semi-definite, this one must be positive semi-definite. Uh, so that comes to our problem. So in our case here, the row one, two, row one, row one, three, row two, one, they are all same row. Uh, so for this to be positive, positive semi-definite, uh, one of the condition, equivalent condition is that all the principal minus are greater than or equal to zero. Which means that if we delete any number of row and columns, same number of row and columns uh, on on this matrix uh, along the diagonal, uh, the determinant of the remaining sub matrix uh, should have a greater uh, have a determinant of greater than or equal to zero. So that's that that's defin definition of principal minus, and that will comes down to uh, these two conditions. If we re remove one row uh, on column one row on one column, we get this term. Uh, if we don't remove anything, that will be the de determinant of the whole matrix. Uh, that will be that will be this. If we remove two rows, that will be just one. Uh, so that's that comes to this condition. The first one is easy. It just comes down to row greater than or equal to minus one, less than or equal to one. Nothing useful. And so what we left is this this term, the determinant of this matrix has to be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and uh, so that that simplifies to this this inequality, one minus three times rho square plus two times rho uh, power three greater than or equal to, uh, to zero. Uh, so uh, so 
it comes down to what value role that this this uh, this polynomial is is greater than equal to zero. So we need to find the roots of this this uh, this polynomial. And here we're gonna uh, use uh, first try to find the rational roots of this uh, this uh, polynomial. So we use the rational zero zero, which uh, which is uh, I'm gonna show you. Uh, a screenshot of, uh, on, online that is what is the rational zero theorem to review it. What the rational zero theorem says, uh, it says if if the coefficients of a polynomial uh, are, are integers, and then the rational roots uh, must have a numerator which is a factor of the constant term in the in the polynomial. And the denominator of the root uh, is, we must have a factor of of dn, which is the coefficient of the uh, the most powerful terms in the polynomial. And uh, and to see why it's the case, uh, let's suppose that we have uh, so suppose we have uh, a factor of 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 the polynomials uh, in terms of uh, this form, then uh, we have uh, roots of b1 divided by a1, b2 divided by a2, and so on. Uh, if we take out uh, all the uh, a1, a2, uh, ak to ak uh, outside, then we get this term here. We get this form here. Uh, but if you look at this form, which which says that if it times all the a1 to ak's to to the most powerful, which which is x to the power n. Uh, which tell us that those are factors of dn, and the same if it if if it times uh, uh, the uh, the roots uh, b one divide a one b two divide a two and to b b k divide a k uh, to the to the c k constant term that will be our d zero constant term, and that tells us that uh, that b one b two and b k to b k are are factors of d d zero so that's basically tells um, this that's basically the, the rational uh, zero theorem and it tells uh, uh, to find the possible uh, rational roots of of a polynomial we're gonna look at the factors of the constant term and the factors of the of the most powerful term d dn and that's that's uh, the rational zero theorem and then uh, we we use uh, so by the rational zero zero theorem, we know that um, the possible uh, roots are, are by uh, by using uh, the factors of uh, of ones and factors of of the power the, the most powerful terms, uh, which is two. We find all the factors, and then we we'll, we we'll look at the factors of the constant term divided by the factors of of the Two here, uh, so we have uh, four possible options: uh, plus minus one and plus minus one half. So our, our first try is we try. Uh, so now we try minus one. I can be see that minus one is the root. If you, if you put in one, minus one, this will go to zero. And 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 then we're gonna uh, try to find the rest of the term. So we divide this polynomial uh, by rho minus one, and we find that this is equivalent to rho minus one times uh, a new polynomial term, uh, which is uh, uh, rho minus one times two rho square minus rho minus one. Uh, but this new polynomial term also has a possible option of minus one. It's also a rule which we will see here. If we divide this term by rho minus one, we get. Uh, we get this this new polynomial. That means that our our polynomial here is actually equivalent to rho minus one to the power two times two rho plus one equal to zero, and that gives us two uh, three uh, roots uh, one duplicate which is, uh, which is uh, one, and and one is uh, minus one over two. Uh, so. Uh, so we have a couple of ranges, uh, minus one to uh, from minus one to to minus one half, from minus one half to uh, to one. Uh, but 
if we take the derivative of this this polynomial, we see that uh, in between the range of minus one half and one, uh, the function is is concave uh, in in this range, uh, and it's above above zero. So so. So in order for this, so in order for this uh, polynomial to be greater than or equal to zero, rho must be between minus minus one half and one. So that's our answer to to the original question. For uh, so rho must be minus uh, between minus one half and one uh, for this to become uh, to be the valid range of rho. And that's it. Thank you, everyone.